Good afternoon, everybody. I'm out here in the highlands of North Carolina. It's an incredible day today, perfectly clear. We're gonna be staying here at this Yellow Mountain Fire Lookout Tower. We'll be camping out for the night and hopefully capturing an incredible sunrise in the morning. So I figured this is a great opportunity to take you along with me, and I'm gonna share with you what I believe to be the top three tips to capturing incredible landscape photos. So stick around to see that what the results are, and I'll even share with you a bonus tip that I think will change the way that you take photos forever. The first tip that I'll give you for getting incredible landscape photos is you pretty much have to go out when nobody else does. If you think about it, most everybody is taking photos in the middle of the day or on weekends when people have time off from work and they actually have time to go out and enjoy with their families and everything like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you just want to get photos for your family memories, then that's perfectly fine. However, if you do want to elevate your game, you're really going to want to go out when no one else does. So what I mean by this, in my particular case today, I'm out on a Thursday and I've been up here at the fire tower for probably about four hours and I haven't seen another person. So that's something that you could plan on is coming out during a weekday, maybe taking some time off work. You can also go out in the early morning or in a late afternoon when there's golden hour, when the sun is really low in the sky and it and the light just really casts out diffused light on everything and it creates um, create shadows and contrast and uh, dimensions and everything and it makes it a lot more appealing to look at. You can go out during the blue hour. So this is usually between like 15 minutes and 45 minutes right before the sun comes up and also uh, this around the same amount of time after the sun goes down. And uh, this will give you a lot of a lot of rich blue and purple colors that are uh, uh, that are really enjoyable to look at. You can also go out when the weather is really bad and that may seem uh, not so appealing for, for a very good reason but if you if you can push yourself to go out when it's raining or when it's snowing people are just not used to seeing landscapes in the places that they're familiar with during these times when people don't wanna go out. So if you can manage to push yourself to go out during really bad weather, you're gonna get some really nice, dramatic, moody shots. On to tip number two, that will help uh, elevate your photography regardless of the time that you go out. Tip number two for you, you, uh, you gotta quit taking photos at eye level all the time. Granted, there is some photos that will warrant that you would take the photo at eye level, but in most cases, the, these type of photos are what everyone is used to seeing. Probably the easiest thing you can do is uh, simply get down low, get down on your knees, uh, get close to some foreground element in your scene. You could also get up high if you can get up on top of a ladder or on top of a building. These are really going to help improve uh, uh, your photos of, of whatever subject that you uh, may be capturing. There are uh, compositional techniques that you can incorporate and they, they call them rules of photography, but to be honest, they're, they're good to keep in mind, but you want to think of them as more as guidelines to help guide you in uh, capturing the photos that you want, be willing to bend the rules. But I'll, I'll give you a few of the compositional techniques that have helped improve my photography a lot more. Number one, you probably heard of it. It is the rule of thirds, uh, but in case you haven't, it's where your frame is divided up into uh, nine different quadrants. And uh, 
typically what you want to do is uh, line up your subject on one of the lines. So you have uh, two horizontal lines and then two vertical lines. And uh, if a lot of times what I like to do is put some sort of mountain peak on one of those uh, top third uh, uh, intersections between the vertical and the horizontal line. If you want to emphasize more of the sky, you would put the horizon on that lower third horizontal line. However, if you want to emphasize more of your foreground in the landscape, you would put your horizon on that top horizontal line. A couple other uh, techniques would be uh, incorporating foreground uh, into uh, your uh, photo. So again, going back to not taking photos uh, at eye level, get down low. You can still shoot that same main subject, whether it's a mountain or a tree or a waterfall, but simply by moving yourself down, uh, and maybe um, incorporating some brush or some rock into the foreground, this will create a lot of depth in your photo. It'll make it look a lot more three-dimensional instead of just flat and boring. Leading lines is a, is a really strong compositional technique. This can be a little tricky when you're out in the landscapes and mountains. Leading lines is gonna be uh, a lot more evident in cities and stuff like that but you can still find leading lines in things like rivers, streams, paths, uh, trails, and anytime you can use a leading line in your foreground to guide the viewer to whatever subject it is you're emphasizing in your photo, that'll create depth, start the viewer in one part of the photo and guide their eye to the main subject and what you want to emphasize in your photo. Something that I like to do in a lot of my photos is actually just dead centering my subject. Typically when I find myself doing this is if there's some sort of prominent subject like a really interesting looking tree or something like that, but the environment maybe around it isn't so uh, uh, pleasing to look at, you can really open up your aperture, place that tree dead center into uh, the frame of your photo, and that way all of the tension is going to uh, the center of the uh, photo and that tree and nothing else. Typically when I'm out walking around, I'm pretty much looking for anything that stands out, uh, anything that uh, creates contrast in colors, uh, pretty much anything that really catches my eye. Maybe there's a tree that still has some autumn uh, orange, red, and yellow colors uh, and all the other trees around it don't. Maybe they're all dead. This would, what would really allow that tree to stand out um, again uh, because of that uh, color contrast. I'll use this time during golden hour uh, to take some photos uh, and then this will lead into my final point that, that I'll talk about with you today regarding getting great landscape photos. God, guys, look at that. That's everything you dream for when you come out for a camping trip. That is absolutely incredible. Well, this is probably a perfect time to give you the, uh, the third tip of the day. It may sound really simple, but really all you gotta do is shoot a lot more than you think that you need. If you think about it, it's true. Whenever you go to an incredible place like this, it's very easy just to pull out the camera, take one or two photos, and then call it a day. So there's nothing wrong with that. If you just want to simply enjoy the moment without any technology or cameras or anything like that, and uh, there's, there's no doubt by doing that, you're in the moment entirely. But the problem is when you get back to your studio and you're editing your photos, you didn't get the photo that you needed and uh, you only took a couple photos so you don't really have very many options. So it's kind of a hard balance to find, but I would encourage you to keep on shooting 
a little bit longer than you normally would. Take a lot more photos than you think that you actually need. Because uh, if you take a lot more photos, uh, this is simply going to give you more opportunities uh, and more chances to get an incredible shot. And move around in your environment. I mean, get the obvious shot, but then after you get that, then move around your subject and uh, move around in the area that you're at. Keep on taking photos. Uh, and uh, there's, if you do this, there's very little chance that you're not going to get an incredible photo. And if you, if you do keep on uh, taking photos more than you think that you need, the good thing about this is, especially if you have, you have your family members with you, is uh, you increase your chances of getting really amazing candid moments out in nature uh, with your family. And uh, when I'm talking about these candid moments, they could be intimate moments between your family members uh, enjoying whatever amazing place that you're at. It could also be wildlife in the area that you're at. And if you simply only took a couple photos and put your camera away, and then all of a sudden an animal pops out and you could have got that incredible photo. And that just doesn't only go for wildlife. The fact of the matter is there's moments and opportunities that are gonna come up that you would have never expected. So even if you do put the camera away, the one piece of gear that I would recommend, it's called a capture clip that you can uh, clip onto your bag and then uh, you put a little clip on the bottom of your camera and then hook it in right there. So that way you can hook your camera into your bag on your shoulder, forget about it, and then uh, when an opportunity does arise, uh, that camera is readily available so you can start taking photos whenever you need. So it sounds simple, but it really is true. You got to keep the camera readily available and you got to take more photos than you think that you need. Oh, it's getting cold. And uh, that, that wraps up the three tips. Uh, I did promise you a bonus tip that I would provide to you. And, uh, but first, we're going to wrap everything up here tonight. I'm going to enjoy the rest of the sunset and, uh, and then get in, the, get in the tent and get a little sleep. We'll wake up in the morning and we'll catch a sunrise. I'll give you my final fourth tip that will uh, help you elevate your photography. been a long night oh man um, could not sleep at all the winds were just harsh all last night even having the shelter of the fire hut and uh, my tent inside of it but I could not sleep at all and uh, it was just so freezing cold but I did fall asleep for, I don't know, maybe a total of an hour <laughs> all of last night. And uh, probably thinking to yourself, man, Miles, why do you go through all that for this? But that is what I do. It's probably, I don't know, it's probably about quarter to eight right now. And, uh, and this is probably one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. This is what it's all about, my, my friends, is, uh, is coming out when, even when you think the conditions are not going to be worth it, and uh, sometimes things don't work out for you. There's been so many times that I've gone out and uh, I did not get one usable shot, and it, and it was a waste of time. But it's those moments that develop your fortitude 
to uh, keep on pressing on and uh, for situations like this where it does happen to work out. It's really about just putting yourself in the right situation ahead of time and then pack up our stuff and start heading down and I'll give you my fourth and uh, final tip that I think will drastically change uh, how you take photographs forever. I'm just coming down and it was a magnificent morning. I promised I would give a bonus, a fourth tip. And what this tip is, it's setting your camera into aperture priority mode. In case you don't know what aperture priority is, it's basically a setting that you set in your camera where you tell it what aperture you want to use. And then the camera will adjust the shutter speed and the ISO accordingly in order to get the correct exposure. So you may be asking yourself, well, Miles, why would you spend all this money on camera equipment and lenses and you have the ability to use fully manual settings and why are you using an automatic setting? The reason for this is simple. In photography, landscape, street photography, weddings, whatever it may be. Obviously you have a goal of what it is that you wanna shoot. However, you have no idea when those situations are actually going to arise. So when they do arise, if you're fuddling around trying to dial in three different exposure settings in your camera, by the time you're actually ready, that moment is gonna be long gone. And then you're gonna be asking for a reshoot and in a lot of cases, you don't got an opportunity for a reshoot. Aperture priority is a, a mode that I kind of stay in by default to simply get the shot. And this is very important even in landscape photography because light is always so fleeting and you just got to get the shot in. Cameras are really good these days and technology has improved to where 99% of the time, it, you're going to get the exposure you need out of aperture priority. I still do use manual mode, but I'll use manual mode when I do know that I have the time to set up the shot exactly how I want. By simply making this small little tweak in the way that you take photos and sticking into aperture priority, I can guarantee you, you're going to walk home with many more fantastic shots and memories that are going to last a lifetime. So there you have it guys, there are my four tips for getting incredible landscape photos. I hope that you like the tips as well as the photos I took last evening and also this morning. I think it was a really incredible and epic sunrise. The most important thing is you just got to remember to constantly get outside your comfort zone. If there's something that you want to capture, make a plan, bring your equipment and make it happen and definitely don't forget to hit record if any of the gear that i use that you're interested in i'll link everything down in the description um, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you found any value out of this video if you're interested in this type of content regarding photos video or drone work uh, stay tuned and i'll be posting a lot more in the future thanks have a good one